Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a couple of people did ask hand history questions. This one actually came privately via 2 plus 2. And I see a monster prefaces the hand by saying, Mate, you did such a good job making videos of the last hands I sent you, I thought I should send you another similar one. It's a little different, except that the villain is an unknown, and I actually stick to the flop plan this time. Okay, so this hand is from 25 in the limit online. Hero raises under the gun, gets a caller, they go heads up to it. Hero flops an overpair and a very, very clean 10 deuce deuce board. Hero bets, faces a raise, and here we are. And I see a monster says, while villain is an unknown, it's unlikely he has a two, and even if he did, I doubt the majority of unknowns would take this line with such a strong hand on a board with no draws. My plan from here is to allow him to have the lead in the hand and let him spaz off his stack to me. Even if an ace or king hits the turn, I'm most likely going with the hand. So that's exactly what ICM Monster does. He calls, and at this point, by the time he calls, there's going to be 13 in the middle, 1850 effective back. I mean, we're very, very pot committed to this point, so I love the fact that we're creating the plan. I love the fact that we're creating the committing plan. Good to go from there. However, I am going to say one quick thing that I think goes very, very overlooked in situations like this. And yes, MP1 is an unknown, so I guess I'm just going to talk about this a little bit more conceptually, because if this were, say, against a tag or some sort of thinking player, someone that you know is a thinking player, this becomes much, much more important. But just conceptually speaking, once we call, I think the average person is going to assume that we have a decent hand, right? Probably 10x, jacks plus. Essentially, we have some sort of decent hand. Otherwise, why would we ever call here, right? We're Essentially, like I said earlier, we're going to be pot committed once we do that. So anyone with half a brain is going to realize that we have a hand that we're comfortable being pot committed with. So that all being said, we really can't represent any bluffs when we call here, right? I mean, unless we're just going to go for some interesting stop and go, which just really doesn't get run nowadays. Uh, it's just a situation where I think we almost always rep exactly what we have. So another option here would be to 3-bet, and you could 3-bet jam, you could min 3-bet. I mean, there's so many different options here for aggressing that will confuse a lot of players. You know, they're used to seeing players bet call here, especially in a full ring game, with something like top pair or slight over pair, that sort of thing. So if you click it back, they may think that you have ace-king, they may think that you're just farting around with something, and you may induce a lot more mistakes than that, and especially against a thinking opponent who may take the bluff raise to 575 and once you call you turn your hand face up and he's able to play pretty perfectly right he's not going to fire any turns because it would be way 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 too face up so that's a really really important thing to consider is kind of what you represent you know if you represent the exact hand you have with the exact line that you're taking is that really what you want to do you know, especially when you're playing against better players. And I understand this person's unknown. We don't know if he's a good thinking player, but if nothing else, it's at least important to consider this before you just mindlessly call. And yes, calling is going to be the default against a lot of aggro fish. They can't understand that by calling here, you're repping a single pair that's never going to fold, right? You know, against anyone who does anything that exploitably, yes, you could call here and call all turns and you'll be just, just fine. But if MP1 can hand read it all, you want to be very, very aware of what you're representing and be very cognizant of the times you're representing the exact hand you have. But as played, here does decide to call, and again, there are still player types where I certainly will call this, especially against aggro tards, people that aren't able to really think about what I'm representing, they're just more focused about thinking that they have to try to bluff me off the hand, in which case calling here with intentions on, of course, calling this action is going to be very, very typical, very standard, and I assume very, very profitable. So ultimately, I'm glad that ICM Monster created a plan, and I'm very happy to see that he's stuck with it this time. It's just in general, there are some things we want to consider on the flop, and again, think about perceived range when we're playing against players that can consider it. Not necessarily that MP1 in this exact hand could think like that, just kind of giving you food for thought for the future. So ICM Monster, thanks for the great hand, and if you or anyone else has a poker-related hand or question, feel free to leave it on our Google Plus page. I'll leave a link for that in the description box, and also please make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying these types of videos. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there, and happy grinding.